So now, um, so basically, uh, I have uh, I divide into three part altogether, right? Yeah. So for the, the first part is uh, basically we do some uh, groundwork, uh, some foundation, basic understanding what is forex all about, and um, and now uh, and then the second part would be uh, we we talk uh, the mainly which is the um, the fundamental analysis. Do you know what is a fundamental analysis? Not really. Okay. So basically, a uh, fundamental analysis is bas basically is a uh, we look at the economic reports mm -hmm. of a country, the geopolitics of a country uh, of uh, of worldwide, and of and of of course the uh, the interest rate, inflation. Uh, we we come to the conclusions whether a particular country are they doing well or not. Because uh, usually when a country is doing well economically, uh, mm -hmm. their currency will tend to uh, be strengthened. Yeah. Right? So uh, that, that, is, that is basically a, a very brief introduction of uh, what is uh, fundamental analysis. Uh, last two days, uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman, they have, he has to answer to the Congress in the US and also the, the House about the future inflation. Because they fear the, the 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 government fear that there is a risk that the U.S. might go into a uh, inflation uh, very fast, right? Yeah. So they are worried about inflation. So they they start to question the this Federal Reserve, the central bank. Now, Federal the central bank is is the the country that you know the central. Do you know the central bank? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, in Federal Reserve is a U.S. central bank. So this chairman has to answer to the government for the last two days. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the uh, uh, expectation, the interest rate, the inflation is going up. So now uh, he has to assure the government that, well, uh, uh, we are not too worried about inflation, things like that. So you can see, uh, so, so that, that kind of uh, speech alone, it can affect the currency, especially the dollar, because uh, it, it's coming out from the US, right? So when we when we trade the found, uh, forex, a lot of times uh, the currency are moved by all these uh, important people who do the speeches, right? Especially it comes to interest rate. So uh, so the second part of this uh, program, we will talk about the uh, the these uh, fundamental analysis. Now mm -hmm. um, and the third part, we were talking about technical analysis. So uh, unit one. Um, what is forex market? Okay, tell me what do you understand about forex market in your own terms. Um, it's an online exchange market, which is pretty different to most other markets because instead of having like a physical building where it occurs, everything happens digitally or online. It's open like about five and a half days a week, and it's where investors from all over the world can trade currencies. Yeah. So what is the difference between the forex market and the stock market? You know what stock market, right? Yeah. Mm, what is the difference? Um, forex is more for currencies, whereas stocks is mainly for corporations. Okay. Uh, yes, you are right. Right. Stock uh, for stock market, we ma we mainly trade the company performance. Yeah. Company P and L, right? Whether a company doing well or not doing well. Now, when a company is doing well, obviously their their share their share is going up higher, okay. And then if the company miss their miss their target, miss their expected uh, 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 earnings earn, and then of course then their their share price will drop. Now, when forex we are dealing with currency, we are dealing with currency, right? So now, uh, when we when we uh, when investor buy stock, right? They 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 want to buy into those companies that are performing well. Therefore, that they are now uh, for stock investor when they invest in the stock is because uh, uh, they expect the future share price to go higher. All right, and now in order for the stock investor to know whether the share price will go up higher in the future, uh, one way they can know is by looking at the company performance, the P and L, right? They are, they are what kind of business they are in. How well they are, how 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 good are how uh what is the sales like, you know, and how about their management? So it's all about the company, right? Whether the company is doing well management-wise, is it a good management team? 
uh, financial wise are they doing uh, are they making money or how much debt they have as a company how much they borrow and also they will look at uh, what the company sales right every month every quarter every year what is their sales is their sales increasing or at the same level uh, or, or, or decreasing right mm -hmm. and they also look at their competitor right because their competitor can also affect their product sales so when a stock investor want to invest in a in a in a particular company they will look at all these all this detail the company as far as the company uh all about the company right now when a currency trader want to buy or sell a currency what we do is we look at the country right because we are we are we are buying selling currency so whether we know a currency is going to be stronger in the future or whether the currency is going to be weaker in the future right how can we tell we look at the country Right, country performance is a country doing well. So now you study economic. You tell me when. How do you know whether a country is doing well or not well? Um, inflation rate, employment rate. All right. The the number one important is what? Mm. What's the number one important to know whether a country is doing well or not well? Economic growth. Yeah. How do you know there's economic growth? Um. We look at the what GDP. Yeah. Right. Do you know GDP? Yeah. Okay. Now, so every country that we look at, they pay attention to their GDP. Now, mm -hmm. if their GDP is improving every quarter or every year, then it shows that this this country is is producing more. Right. So yes. so, so that is the one one uh, uh side post uh the investor will look at GDP of a country. Now, besides, uh, so besides looking at GDP, of course, like what you say, just now, we look at their country, what employment, right? Yeah. Now, if the country have a, a full employment, it means that everybody have jobs, right? Obviously, the country must be doing well. That's a people, everybody have job, right? Business must be growing. There, there is growth. There's growth, right? So yeah. just now you also mentioned about the growth, very important. So what what do you study about in school? How can you tell there's growth in the in the in the in the country? Like economic growth or yeah, economic growth. Yes, correct. How can you tell whether there there is a there's growth in the country? Um, increase of production of economic goods and services. Okay, so we see that GDP, right? Yeah. Okay. What else GDP besides GDP? What else? Is there any other thing that you learn in school? Um, how can you tell uh, uh you, you got it very right right we look at the country is, is the country growing or not right if the country is not growing there's something is definitely their economy is not doing well so the first and uh, and uh, foremost we look at the gdp okay mm -hmm. now besides gdp what else can we look at um natural resources natural resources how can we tell whether a, con a country doing well uh, uh it has growth by looking at the natural resources um maybe to do with the imports and exports and whether they've increased balance of payment do you, do you, do you, do you learn about this um we briefly touched on it yeah balance of payment all right balance of payment is referring to a country their import and export the differences right if a country have two have uh, so much import than export. Of course, they will have a negative balance of payment, isn't it? Yeah. Just like you, just like if you are working, right, and then uh, every month you you get a paycheck of five thousand, but your expenses every month end up to be six thousand, then you're going to have a negative uh, a cash flow, right? So of course, we look at the country balance of payment as well. Okay. All right, and of course, the other things that we look at the uh, is the. Uh, 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 and of course, whether their employment uh, is true employment. Now, beside that, we also look at the what the uh, retail sales. Did you uh, do you understand about? Do you learn about this? Yeah. Retail sales. Now, what the retail sales tell us? Um. Isn't it like the amount of purchases of finished goods and products? Retail sales is basically uh, it's just, just like you go to mall, right? Your your mom yeah. bring you to shopping mall, right? 
uh, how they are talking about how capable that the populations right are spending how is the spending power how are they spending or are they not spending right so so they by looking at the retail sales every month because these are all the money report that provide uh, provide uh, uh, compiled by the government every country they will have this right uh, when we come to the part two we'll go both go deeper in all this okay we'll go deeper on all this but right now uh, uh now let's go back to what we left we left just now now the difference between stock and currency market is stock look at a company right and then investor look at the company if, if the company is doing well well they expect the share price to go up in the future so they buy right now when the price is is low Right, but if they feel that yeah, well, this company is not doing well, it looks like business is going down, and uh, and the investor will start selling their stock because they expect future price to go lower, right? But whilst in currency, uh, when investor want to buy a particular uh, currency, whether it's a dollar or euro or Swiss franc or Japanese or Australia, they always look at the country uh, performance. Is the country GDP doing well? You know, of course there are other factors as well, right? So that's the difference between the forex market and the stock market. Okay. Yeah. Now, as you mentioned just now, forex market is a uh, twenty-four hours. Is uh, it is uh, it's not like uh, the market never closed. The market uh, never closed yet, but the office people they were off, right? You can see this this yeah. uh, picture here. They are actually overlapping. Do you do you learn this in school? They are overlapping. Yeah. Okay. So I don't have to mention too much on this, right? So the most active. The most active uh, trading activities because this is a lot of traders, a lot of my students, they always ask, they say, Benny, uh, Forex is the 24 hours. Now, what, when is the best time to trade? All right? When is the best time to trade? Now, the best time to trade, the most opportunity, the best time obviously is when the price is moving. Now, yeah. when the price is not moving, obviously there is not many opportunity, right? So when people ask, when, what, when is the best time to trade? Uh, uh, forex market it means that what they are asking is when you have opportunity now we will have opportunity when the market start moving down or, or when the market start moving up so when the market start moving it is when the market two major market overlapping each other now mm -hmm. forex we can divide into three major market right asian market all right Asian yeah. market will comprise of the, of course, the Australia, Sydney, Japan, Tokyo, right? Consists of Hong Kong, Singapore, right? These are all considered Asian market. Then the second market is we have the New York market, US market, right? Then the biggest market as far as currency is concerned is London market. Right, London market. So these are, we divide the forex into three main markets, right? The biggest is London market. Mm -hmm. followed by New York market. And then the, the last is actually the Asian market, right? So these are the three markets. Now, when is, when, uh, uh, when's the time where they, the, you have the, the uh, most of the opportunity? It is when the two major markets overlapping each other. So if you look at this, you can see that uh, the Sydney market, right? This is the GMT time. Yeah. Now, if we convert to our local time, it's about I think about uh I think five o'clock I think a.m. Yeah, correct. Now Tokyo open market at what time? Six a.m. Six is it six or seven? Right. Seven. I, I, I think about I think about seven, right? Yeah. So when before Sydney market open, before uh, uh Tokyo market open, it, it is only. Sydney market, Sydney market and New Zealand market. Those markets will be very, very quiet and you see the market don't really move. When I don't say, when I say don't really move, you don't see the price move. It's just like moving horizontally, right? So when yeah. the price moving horizontally, basically no activities, no opportunity, right? So it is when the another new market open, which is Tokyo market. So when they open and when these two markets overlap, uh, that is where the opportunity start to uh, start to uh, you know, we, we start to see opportunity and that's where the, we see the market start to move now and then the other the other time where we see the two major market overlapping it is when London market uh, sorry London market over here and the uh, New York market uh, this is the time this is when uh, 
nine o'clock, nine to about midnight, 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Right now, so this is a time where a, a lot of trading activities because we have the two biggest market open at the same time, right? So of course, uh, it will just keep rolling uh, 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 round the clock until, like what you say, there is a, a five days, five days uh, activities, right? Now the other uh, uh, major difference between forex market in the stock market is forex market is decentralized. Do you know what's a decentralized? There's no like main trading window. No, there's no. Uh, uh, there's no, uh, uh, how you call it, uh, no exchange, right? Example, Singapore Stock Exchange, Malaysia Stock Exchange. There's one uh, uh, government body, there's the department to control, to register the transaction, right? Yeah. So there is a, there's somebody controlling the, somebody want to buy a share, somebody want to sell a share, all the share has to go through that exchange, right? Yeah. So all the transactions are being mm -hmm. registered. Right, so we say stock stock market have exchange, but the option uh not the option the forex market they don't have exchange. Nobody control it. It's, it's between bank trade against one another, right? The big banks. Now, if we take a look at the next slide below here, you see the big bank, the major bank, mm -hmm. right? They trade against one another through this. Of course, this is a software that they can uh, bidding software, right? And the down under the major bank are all the medium medium sized bank to small bank. Now, which are the big bank? Example, Citibank, right? Deutsche Bank, mm -hmm. and JP Morgan, right? Uh, uh, no, uh, Goldman Sachs, you know. So all those big banks, right? These are the big player, all right. So now then we come under this uh, uh, retail market maker. These are the people who make the market. Right and uh, retail ECN. These these are all the broker, hedge fund. Right. So we are here. We as a retail trader, we are right at the bottom of the of this hierarchy. Right. So when we want to trade, put in an order, we have to put our order through a broker. These are all the broker. Mm -hmm. Right. These are all the broker. Now the broker will receive our after receive our uh, our uh, order, they will forward to. Yeah, upper line, which is we call it liquidity provider LP, right? So it uh, usually they are the medium side bank to, to big bank, and this big bank again they will transact to the major bank, right? So the the other player is uh so so we are the retail trader. We are one of the trader one 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 group here. Yeah. Now the other group of participant in this market is the, are the hedge fund, a big institution. Yeah. Big order trader, right? So these are the people who actually can move the price, right? We are too, our order is too small, we can't move. But these are the ones who can actually move the price. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, of course, the other, and uh, one more group of trader, I don't, I, I, we don't, I don't call them trader, but they are the player, right? Which is a central bank. Central bank, right? So in the, in the, in the forex market, we basically, Right, this will come under uh, uh, module two. We basically divide the uh, the the player into three main group. We are the retail trader, the smallest, and then we have the institution trader, the hedge fund, those people who manage those uh, wealthy uh, wealthy investor money, right, uh, and some pension fund, right, insurance fund. So these are belong to this group of people. Now another group of people, a player, are the central bank, right. Central bank are in the market not for uh not be, not not for profit uh for uh, profitability they are yeah. they are there to to maintain their their objective to make sure that the economy go go uh, function smoothly right now the the only two player that is uh involved in the forex trading uh and for profit are the hedge fund and the people like us the retail trader okay. Yeah. So these are three grower trader. Now, um, okay, what else? Is, is that okay so far? Right, this forex. Yeah. So, so uh, in in a forex market, uh, do not assume that everybody involved in a forex market is for profit. No, right now there is a big difference between stock market and the forex market. Now, for stock market, it is a 
you can see that most of the uh, uh, you go to are, are you familiar with stock market yeah okay in the stock market if you take a look at the all the indexes that like nasdaq like the s p right the dow zone over a 10-year period you will see that their their curve their, their graph is like this always like this yeah always going up right now why because stock market is a is a investment instrument for wealth creation wealth creation right it is meant to go up right it is meant to go up so over a period of 10 years 20 years you will see that you will definitely go up the, the especially the index right so when people who buy at the low over over time right they will they, they, they will create wealth through stock investing right but for forex market it is very different if you take a look at the forex market I'm not sure. Have you seen any forex chart before so far? Yeah, it looks like the candles. Okay, let me show you the uh, see, show you the chart. All right, so this is uh, fifteen minutes now. If I go to a longer time frame like monthly, you can see the the forex charts are very different from the stock chart. They are like this. Can you see a lot more? Yeah, they are trading in the range, mm -hmm. right? In the range, whether in the narrow range or in the wide range, but overall, they are trading in the range, right? But in the stock market, they don't trade in the range. The stock market over, over time, they are going one direction, which is up, mm -hmm. right? So that's the difference between stock market. Another different between stock market and the forex market. Now, stock market is for wealth creation. Well, mm -hmm. W E A L T H, right? For wealth creation. Forex market is not for wealth creation. Forex market is just a how you call it? A, a medium, a medium, a medium for for the trader to transact, to get something they want, right? It's just like uh, you are in Malaysia, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's say you want to buy something from Japan. Now, you need to send money, right? Convert your ringgit to, into yen first and, and pay to pay your supplier, isn't it? Yeah. So the participant use forex market as a media for transaction to carry out something okay so you can see that a lot of time the the, the participants in the forex market they are not there to speculate for profit the bulk of the participants are actually uh, using forex market for transaction or for hedging purpose you know what's hedging um for hedging purpose. Isn't it like a large investment that's meant to offset potential losses or gains? Uh, can you speak a bit louder? I, I, I try to. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like an investment that's meant to offset any potential losses or gains? Yes, yes. Can you give me some example? Hedging. Uh, How people use a forex to hedge against risk. Hedging is basically hedging against future risk. All right. Mm -hmm. So how 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 investor or how trader can use the forex market to hedge against risk? Mm -hmm. Okay, I give you one example. Right. Let's say you are a businesswoman and yeah. you have a factory in another country in uh, in maybe let's say in. Uh, 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 in Vietnam, doing manufacturing, right? You have thousands of workers there. Mm -hmm. Now, every every month, you need to pay them salary, right? And you export after you after the product manufacture, you export out of the country, and you export to US. You collect in US dollar, but you need to pay the local worker in their Vietnamese currency, Vietnamese dong. We call it right. Yeah. So now, if you Look at if you are the uh, if you are the owner of the factory and you look at the US dollar, US dollar has been going up and then coming down and then now going up, right? Now, mm -hmm. 
Now the US, now you, you are getting US dollar, right? So yeah. now you know that US dollar right now is very high. Yeah. Okay. So you would like to convert your US dollar right now into maybe say your Vietnamese currency because right now if you if you convert right now, right, you know that you can you can uh, get a better rate. Yeah. Okay. And there are, there are some hedging. They you what they do is uh, we call it future market. Now, uh, the forex market that we are talking here is is a spot market. Spot market. There's this called future market, future currency, future market. Now, what is future market? Do you learn about future market? No. Okay. So basically, is let's say, um, um, let's say the we we go like I use another example, right? Now let's say the dollar is high and now the dollar is very low. Dollar is now very low. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, and you as a businesswoman, you know that dollar right now is very low. And in the future, you need dollar to buy some raw material, right? And if you can come, you can buy, you can book the current exchange rate right, right, right now, then that will, you, you will make a lot of uh, profit because the exchange rate right now is very low. But the thing is, you don't need, you don't need the dollar right now. You only need the dollar maybe, let's say, three months into the future. Three months into the future, right? Because you you, you look at your productions, right? Uh, your production can last for your raw material can last for another three months. So in three months' time, you need to uh, to to order something from overseas, and then you need to pay them in dollar, right? Yeah. So right now, knowing that dollar right now is very low, you can go to the future market and say that I want to buy example half a million US dollar, half a million US dollar, right? Yeah. Let's say because. So when you buy, but you say, I want to buy at half a million US do, uh, dollar, but I only want to deliver three months later. Not now, but three months later. But the rate, you confirm the current rate. Because three months later, what happened if the rate go up? Right? So, so there are a lot of people, a trader or business people, they use Forex to hedge against the risk. They look at the current exchange rate. They say, oh, well, right now it's very low. I better book the rate right now so that I, I, will, I will not loss in the exchange rate mm -hmm. you understand now yeah okay right so that so in the forex market a lot of people use the forex market for hedging purpose right they are only a small minority which is the hedge fund right they are speculating for profit the retail trader speculating for profit so we need to understand this not everybody's uh, uh, involved in forex market for profit all right mm -hmm. yeah Okay, so I think that is for the this uh, about this. Mm. Is there anything you want to ask me on this this uh, unit one? Um, Have you read through this? Yeah, I've read through this. Is there anything that you are not sure? Because I I do not want to read to you word by word. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very boring, right? So so if you uh so I rather you you if you have read through. And things that you don't understand, then I, I elaborate more, right? I explain more. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm good with this first unit. Okay. So we go to the unit two. Because, because first unit is basically, like I said, that this uh, part one is, yeah, is a general knowledge, right? So if you're going to use for general knowledge, this is good enough. But if you're going to use for trading, right? This is, uh, uh, you don't really make use of uh, much, much. There's not much usefulness for trading for purposes, right? Yeah. Now we go to unit two, right? Now who trade forex and why? All right, this one which we cover a little bit just now in unit one. Now pe people who trade the, the forex, people, the participants, right? The bank, the big banks, the small bank, the medium bank, right? They are there, there to facilitate trade for to go give up loan and company, right? Company they use forex exchange to pay for goods, right? When they when they order good to overseas, they they need to convert their local currency into their supplier uh, uh, currency and pay them, right? So, so that this, this the company who use Forex. And there are some companies used for hedging purposes, which I just mentioned just now, right? Mm -hmm. Then the, another group of uh, uh, a player uh, are the government. Now, government don't directly involve in the Forex. They ask, they, they let the central bank, right? The central bank to buy and sell, to involve in the, in the, in the currency market, thereby to uh, control 
the money supply, right? They control the money supply in their financial market and therefore they can affect the inflations, right? They can affect the interest rate. Okay, this is very important, which we will cover in the part two, right? So we know that the, the central bank involved in the forest market mainly is to uh, make sure their economy uh, grow at a steady rate, mm -hmm. make sure that the, the economy do not go into inflation too much. Now, we know that uh, inflation, uh, see, we talk about inflation. Do you think inflation is good or bad? Mm. Over time, it can be a good thing as long as it's like not too high a percentage of inflation at once. Mm -hmm. why, why inflation is good? Inflation as a, as a consumer, mm -hmm. you are losing but your purchasing power, right? Yeah. Now, but why is it good? It helps increase production. All right. Because if people have to spend more money from inflation, that means that there's more aggregated demand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, let me use, use a layman term for you. I, I, I hope that you help in the economic school. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, let's say you, uh, you expect economy to, to pick up very fast and you, you expect yeah. inflation to go up, right? Every day you go to the supermarket, you feel that oh now uh, it looks like the same the same uh, the same the same amount of, uh, dollar that you have right now you are buying less and less good. So you can yeah. feel that inflation is going up, and you read the news, inflation is going up. You 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 look at the petrol price that is going up. Everything, the, all the prices are going up, right? So you know that uh, inflation is going up. So when the inflation is going up, it means that the future price is going up or down. It's going up. It's going up, right? So it means that future price is going up. So now, if you are the consumer, and if you need to buy something, you don't need it. You don't need to buy now. You don't need the, the the things right now, the items right now. But you know, you need to eventually, maybe one month later, two months later, you need it, right? And you know that inflation is coming. Would you would you buy buy the item right now instead of buying later? Yeah, you'd probably buy it now before your currency decreases in value. Yeah, be before the price go even higher, right? Yeah. Yeah, your currency will not go down, but the price keep going up. That's what inflation, isn't it? Yeah, because now you can buy less thing, item, right? So knowing that inflation is coming, so you will buy right now instead of buying later, right? And because you buy right now, now the shop owner, they are able to sell more items, right? Their business is getting good okay so when their business is get, getting good they are too busy they are short-handed now they have to hire more staff isn't it to help them yeah so they are in a way creating some employment correct yeah, yeah they are creating employment so when the when the shop the retail shop you're in the neighborhood uh, retail shop start to sell a lot of items they need to start to place their order to the factory yeah. right uh, the factory to re, uh, re, uh, uh, replenish, right? So when they place an the order, when all the shops start to place their order to the factory, the factory has to start increase their production line, maybe to overtime, uh, do overtime, am I right? Yeah. And they have to hire more worker. They have to buy more machinery. Can you see now? Mm -hmm. So when they buy more, they buy more machinery, they are investing, right? So people who sell the machine, they are, they are making more money. And when they hire more, hire more people to in, go into the production, more yeah. people got jobs. And they, yeah. maybe they have to increase their salary because um, everybody are competing for worker. So now, not only they are creating more jobs, right? Salary wages also might increase. Can you see now? Yeah. Just because uh, the consumer think that expectation is going up, so you can see the change effect, the change effect, right? So in a way, inflation is good for the economy, uh, right? Mm -hmm. you, you understand? So that's, 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 that's the, in a very layman, layman words, right? It's so easy mm -hmm. to understand, right? But the central bank will not want inflation to get too high, isn't it? Yeah. The inflation getting too high, then you will, you, you, you will cause the, uh, the uh, it will uh, cause uh, uh, trouble to the economy, right? So most of the central bank, they have a uh, more or less 
uh, a certain percentage of inflation. Do you know what the percentage? Um, I know for, what it is in Malaysia. For developed, for developed economy, developed economy is about 2%. Yeah. Right, 2%. Now, for those uh, developing economy, they'll be much higher. It could be 4% to 6%, right? Okay. So when we are talking about the, when we talk about forex, uh, forex market, we mainly focus on the developed country, right? So their inflation is target is 2%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so that is the job of the central bank. They need to uh, maintain their inflation target, right? So how they, how they, how they manip manipulate they by by they by controlling the money supply, okay, and that's the reason why they are involved in the forex forex uh, forex market. Then we have the individual. Now these are the people who let's say they travel overseas, right? They need to exchange their local currency for other currency. So they, they are also part of the uh, participant as well. Or no doubt it's very small, but they are still part of the forex exchange uh, participant, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have the investor. Now, these investors are example, they are investment firm company who manage the, the portfolio for, the, for those that are, are wealthy, uh, wealthy customers, right? And uh, example, if the if if let's say they have a customer who buy a buy buy up a, a company in Germany, right? And they this kind of investing firm, they need to help to convert their local currency into, into a euro. Right, so they are managing all these currency. So we have investor involved in the currency market as well. Then we come to the hedge fund. Now, hedge fund are those investor or trader who trip who purpose is to to they are trading mainly for profit, right? Now, hedge fund they can trade on their own, they can trade with their own money, but majority of the hedge fund they are actually uh, trading on behalf of the wealthy mm -hmm. investor. Okay. Then we come to the next one, which is the retail trader, right? People like your mom, myself, you know, in future, you grown up, you, you are allowed to trade, right? We are all the retail trader, okay? Yeah. Then the last group of participants are, are the broker, right? Because we as a retail trader, when we want to trade currency, we need to trade with somebody. Our order has to put to someone, right? And these, these are the broker, right? And how the broker make the money is... Uh, they don't make the money by the by the profit, whether uh, the customer lose or, or they, they will win, or they, they, they win the customer loss. They, they make the money through the spread. You know why it's a spread? No. The spread is the, the bid and ask price between the currency. Just like if you go to the money changer, you want to change your ringgit to, let's say, to, uh, to dollar, right? Mm -hmm. Your money changer will quote you one rate, right? And in, after you get, after you let's say you get hold of the US dollar and immediately you want to change back to ringgit, the money changer will give you a different rate again, right? So the difference is we, which we call spread. Example, example, let's say you want to change, I'm not sure the, what's the exchange rate for ringgit, but I just think, just a guess. Let's say the, the exchange rate is 1.2107, right? And Another one is 1.2109, uh, right? So you can see there's a difference of two, two pips. We call it two pips, right? So this is a spread. Two pips is a spread, the difference between the, the bid price. This is a bid and this is the asking price, mm -hmm. okay? Now, as a, when, whenever we buy a currency, we always buy at the asking price. Right, and whenever we sell the currency, we always sell at the bid price. So the difference between these two uh, uh, code is two pips, and we call that spread. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's called spread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so these are the uh, currency participants. Are uh, quite straightforward. Now, unit three, uh, basic of currency trading. Okay. Uh, what have you have you read? Have you gone through this uh, unit? Uh, yeah. Okay. Any question about this? So, do currency pairs change over time? Like, obviously not within a six month period, but like over years, or will it always be the same? 
currency change over time, yes? Like the currency pairs, not the currency itself. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, why? Can you repeat your question again? Are well, you asking a question or a statement? <laughs> I'm asking a question, yeah. Okay, can you repeat your question again? Um, will the currency pairs change over time or will it like remain the same? Currency, over a period of time, you will see that they are in a range. Yeah. Sometimes you can go overshoot, but you eventually will come back, right? In the range. Why the currency pair has to be in the range? Because no country want their currency to be too expensive, right? Because if a currency becomes too expensive, what will happen is their export, their product, their export will not be, their, their export company will not be competitive. They will lose out in the global, global, global competition to other country exporters. So no government, no government want their currency to be too, too, too high. Yeah. Right. And also, no government want the currency to be too low. Because mm -hmm. when the currency is too low, they are actually importing inflation. Because if the currency is too low, example, uh, when, let's say when the currency is somewhere in the mean, right? So you, you, let, you used to uh, pay $10 for, let's say, 1 kg. 1 kg of rice, just example. Yeah. Now your currency dropped until you so low, now, you, in order to buy one kg of rice, you need to come out $20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so now, in a way, you are importing inflation to your country. Can you see now? Mm -hmm. So no government, no government, in other words, no central bank of a country want their currency to be either too strong or too weak. They want to be make sure that they are always trading in the range, which is a fair value, which help their economy. Right. So uh, to answer your questions, uh, uh, you were you're saying that uh, whether the currency will trade in the range in the long term. Is that, is that what you're asking? Um, I was asking if like the currency pairs or the most commonly traded currency pairs, will they remain the same over time or are they like changing? Yeah. Uh, over time, it, whether over time, it, 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 it's like a 10 year <laughs> 15 yeah. years, 20 years, right? Uh, over time, mm -hmm. yes, you will remain about the same, right? But of course, in the short term, you will, you, it will vary. Just like in uh, Australia, Australia against AUD against US dollar, right? In 2-0, uh, I, I, I think I remember it was, it was 2-0-2000, right? The exchange rate was like uh, uh, every... Every uh, eighty cent US uh, dollar for one Australia. Yeah. Okay, that was the time. But today, if we take a look again, it was at, at one point in time it went down to about zero point five to one uh, to one Australia. Zero point five US dollar to one Australia. But right now, it go back up to zero point seven. To one Australia, right? Right now we are in two zero two one. Now you compare to two zero two year two thousand. We are talking about twenty years ago. Now we back to square one again. Can you see now? Yeah. Yeah. So the currency over time, right? The government they will want their their currency to trade in a band in the in the band that is comfortable comfortable for their economy for their for their company to do exporting. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now this currency pair, right? Um, we can we can pair up any currency that we look, we we want. Do, do you understand about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can example. You can see that we can as uh as, as, as the major there are, there are eight major currency. They are the U.S. dollar is the is the most traded pair. We follow by the euro. Right, and then we have the Australia. We have the Canada, we have the Japanese Yen, Swiss franc, we have the Pound, what else? NZD. Um, South African Rand. Huh? South African Rand. Yes, but the, the percentage of the, uh, the volume that circulate in the global market is, is, is not, 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 not big compared to this eight. 
right? So these are the big eight can G8 country. G8 country, their currency. These are the most commonly traded currency. So we can pick, we can pick and choose dollar against uh, any currency that we want. We want. We can even pick uh, South Africa rank. Yes, of course, dollar against South Africa rank, or euro again. So we can pick and pa uh, pick and choose any currency pair that we like. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how we pick which currency against what currency? What we usually do is we identify currency which are strong. Yeah. And then we buy the currency, all right? And we identify currency which are weak. And then we sell that weak currency, okay? Because then, because and we know that if we, if we can pair up this, we, have, we can identify two direct currency which are one strong, one weak. We know that it's, the direction is like this. Yeah. Right? Or, or like this, okay? So, for, of course, we, we, we do this for profit, of course, right? So, that's how we pair up the currency. Now, and the, when we pair up a currency, when we pair up a currency, example, in this example, we have the euro pair up US dollar, right? Sometimes you, uh, you hear people say that, that what, the, your, what is your base currency, right? The first currency, we, we call that base currency. Yeah. The second currency, we call, the, we call them code currency, okay? So when we look at the chart, when we look at the chart, example, we go to euro dollar chart, Right, and the euro dollar chart looks something like this. Okay, what this chart is showing is it, it is showing the value of the euro against the dollar. Yeah. Right. Now, when we go to let's say another chart, which is Australia against the US dollar, it moves like this. Again, we are looking at the rate between. This is showing Australia, right? So if you if you want, if you expect Australia to go even higher. You can say, I want to buy here. So I wait for price to come down lower. I, I want to buy at a low. So this is where I want to buy. Mm -hmm. And I expect Australia to go higher, right? So when you are looking at Australia dollar chart, this graph is showing Australia. Okay, you understand what I mean? Yeah. It's not showing the US dollar, right? So when you want to buy the Australia go up higher, right? You When you buy Australia, automatically the broker will sell for you the second currency. You do not have to tell the broker, I want to sell the US dollar because when you go to this pair, Australian dollar, immediately the broker know because the moment you say, I want to buy Australia, they will automatically sell for you the US dollar. Yeah. Right. So on the other hand, if you go to Australia dollar and now you want to sell Australia, you want to sell Australia, and automatically, the broker will buy the US dollar for you. You don't have to tell the broker, I want to buy the US dollar. Yeah. Okay? Right. So, there's a code and base currency. Um, now, the exotic currency pair, uh, beside the eight currency pair, right? Uh, we have the exotic pair. Those are like South Africa rand, Singapore dollar. They are, these are all considered exotic. Mm -hmm. Right? These are all considered exotic currency pair. Dollar against uh, uh, Singh, dollar against Thai baht, dollar against Korean won, dollar against South Africa rand, dollar against uh, uh, what else? Mexican peso, right? So these are all considered exotic pair. Okay. Yeah. And when you hear, uh, sometimes you read articles or news, they say. The major, the major are doing well. So what they meant is the eight currency, the major. We call this eight currency the major. Yeah. Okay, the major. Yeah. All right. Okay, we then we come, come to the next one, which is the bid and ask price. Bid and ask price. Okay. The bid, bid price is the price at which uh, the market or your broker, right? Uh, will buy uh, the currency from you. So as I mentioned just now, when you want to sell currency, example, let's say we look at the euro. You expect euro to go 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 lower, to be weak, to weak. You expect a euro to go lower and you want to sell the euro, right? So when you sell euro, you are selling at the bid price. 
mm. right? The broker will buy from you at the bid price, right? So when you are, when you want to sell euro, but when you want on the other hand, if you expect euro future direction going up, so you want to buy low, so when future when, the, when euro go up, you can make a profit, right? So you want to buy. So when you want to buy euro, you will buy at the asking price. All right, you will ask you will buy at the asking price. So the first quote is a bid price on the left side. The right side is the asking price. Okay, and you look at the different here: one point one zero five one, one point one zero five three. The difference is two pips. That is called spread. Okay, and the last digit, this is called pips. We, in, 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 a, in a we in 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 the forest market we we don't say how many share we say pips right just like there's one uh, example here the smallest increment in price movement of currency can make we call that right a uh, uh, pips okay okay yeah. now um so far do you hear any questions about the asking price bid price no no yeah so now, uh, before I forget, now, example, we see that this particular currency, it is euro dollar. It, we see that there is two pip spread, right? So if you want to buy, let's say at 1.1050, let's say you want to buy exactly at this price. And knowing that knowing that there are two pips spread, what is your what is the 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 what is the price that you have to buy in order to get fuel at this this one point one point one zero five zero one point one zero five two correct right you learn in school is it no <laughs> very good right so always remember. If you think that I want to buy, because because when when in future if you want to buy something, then you you know I want to buy at this price uh, or one point one zero four seven. You want let's say example, you want to buy exactly at this level, and knowing that 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 particular currency have two pips spread, and you are buying, so you need to add this two pips spread onto the price that you want to buy. Then mm -hmm. in order to get fuel at one point one zero four seven. Right, so you need to factor in the spread when you are buying, okay. But when you are selling, you do not have to factor in the spread. Example, you want to sell at one point uh, two one one five. Let's say you want to sell at this price, or and uh, you buy, and now the price goes up, and you want to take profit because when you buy first, in order to take profit, you need to sell, right? Okay, so when you would, let's say you want to sell exactly at this price, 1.2115, you do not have to take in any more spread. You can just sell at 1.2115. All right, so that's the difference between uh, between uh, when it comes to buying, buying, and buying, and uh, buying into a currency and selling a currency at the specific price. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, wh why I say that? Because sometimes I experience some students, uh, they ask me, they sell they sell a particular currency and, and the price drop. So they are making money. They are making money. And they want to take profit, right? And let's say at 1.3165. Uh, right? They want to take profit at this, at this price. And they, they put in, uh, they put in their order, right? They sell to enter. So now, in order to close, they have to buy. They have to buy. And this particular currency pair have a three pip spread, three pips. Okay. So the price goes down to exactly their entry price, yeah. one point one three one seven zero, or even by one pip lower, one point. Three one six nine, right? Yeah. You go up to this level, and then price goes up. 
Okay. So next day when they wake up, they, they see the price go down. They are very happy. They thought they could they make money, but they, 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 the, the trade will be closed because they see that the price make a low of 1.3169 and they, they set the target to close at 1.3170. And they, to their surprise, they say, how come my, my order never get closed? Then, then they start to blame the broker. The broker tried to cheat me. Do you think the broker tried to cheat them? No. <laughs> Why the order never get filled? Why the order never get filled? Because the price already trade below their closing price by one pips. Why their order never get filled? Because if it's like too small a difference, it will remain open. Huh? If it's like too small a difference, will it still remain open? Because if they want to close, if they want to uh, close their position at one point three one, they have to factor in these three pips. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, they will not get filled, right? So it is sometimes when you, in future, when you do trading and they say, how come my order, the price go to that level and yet my order never get triggered, right? Uh, and the price go my direction. You get, you get, you get very angry with the broker. Or sometimes you already in a position and the price go to your target, but the bro your position never get closed and the market go reverse down against you and you get very angry with the broker, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all, your order never trigger. It's all because of the spread. Okay, yeah. so when you when you position when you enter your trade, you must always consider the spread. Okay, very important, yeah. Yeah. Okay, unit four. How are international exchange rates set? Have you read through this? Yeah. Okay, any question about this? Um. Do you know what's a floating rate and floating exchange rate and a fixed exchange rate? Well, for the floating rate, it's more like supply and demand on a global level, whereas for fixed, it's determined by the government itself. Okay, okay. Just in Malaysia, I think that you, I'm. I think you still uh, we call it pack. Yeah. Is Malaysia still packed to US dollar? I think so. Okay. So, uh, do do you understand is the, the what's the pack mean? What's the meaning of pack? It's like, Why a currency mm -hmm. want to pack to a car another currency and not let it free floating? So it can like kind of maintain and monitor its exchange rate? Yeah, but why they want to do that? Correct, you're right. You're right. They want to fix their exchange rate, especially they want to pack to the currency, which is a major currency, right? We example the US dollar, right? Right. So uh why the ringgit, Malaysia ringgit? want to pack to US dollar. Example, Hong Kong. Hong Kong also packed to US dollar, right? Why they want to pack to US dollar? What's the reason? Mm. All I can think of is a stable exchange rate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why they want to have a stable exchange rate? Do you know when, uh, uh, when uh, what happened uh, when uh, during that time, uh, when Malaysia government, um, uh, Dr. Mahathir, they decide to pack ringgit to dollar, do you know what happened during that time? Um, didn't the currency value like... Or maybe you're not yet born. Yeah. Where they did that? Because it went from <laughs> like 3.8 to 4. Plus. Yeah, but why? Because be before that, yeah, okay, you know, when, why they want to pack? Before that was a free full thing, but why? what triggered them to pack? You know, before before Malaysia packed to to US dollar, uh, mm -hmm. in the in a long time ago, yeah, quite quite many times, but dollar in Singapore was one to one. Yeah, you heard right, you heard from your mom, right? <laughs> yeah, one to one. Today is one is to one. I'm not sure. I a long time never go never go to Malaysia and never exchange anymore. <laughs> yeah, now it's like uh one is to three dollars something like that, mm -hmm. right? That the moment the your government pack to US dollar, it, it dropped right compared to Singapore dollar, right? So yeah. why your government want to pack to US dollar? It's because they want a stable exchange rate, which is correct, right? It is because their economy, their, their currency under attack, right? Mm -hmm. Suddenly getting too weak, right? All the all the speculator comes in to sell to sell the ringgit until. It become too weak, right? So they decide to pack to the dollar. 
So uh, uh, the, when the government want to pack their currency to a dollar, there are some sacrifice, right? Because uh, they will lose some uh, uh, loss. Uh, they gain more in the sense that uh, they they get a fixed exchange rate. So there is no fluctuation, not much of fluctuation, right? So they are not they are they are they are not risking any exchange risk. Exchange risk. Do you know what's exchange risk? Exchange rate. So like exchange risk. Risk. Exchange risk. No. So okay, exchange risk. Okay. No. Let example. Example. Right. Now let's say you are the investor. You are very. You have a lot of money, and you 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 go and uh, invest. You put in the. Uh, you send a lot of money to invest in the stock market in Japan. Mm -hmm. Right. So you send your money to Japan by millions. And uh, then after sometimes the stock goes up, you make you you, you make you make you make a profit of let's say uh fifteen uh, percent, right? So now after making a profit fifty percent, you want to send your money back, right? Send your money back to to your country. So now what happened is, uh, when when you want when you when you send your money to Japan. The Japan exchange rate was low relative to your country. Yeah. Now, after you make a fifteen percent profit on the on the on your investment in stock market or in whatever investment that you do there, now you want to send back your your profit fifty percent. But right now, Japan yen has gone up twenty percent in exchange rate relative to your country as currency. Mm -hmm. And if you send back fifty percent, are you making money? You are losing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so so this is what what I mean by exchange risk, right? Mm -hmm. Exchange rate risk, right? So uh, if a country want to pack their currency to a to another currency, they want to avoid any exchange risk. Okay, mm -hmm. but in order to pack a currency to a, to US dollar, we say fixed and fixed an exchange rate. Uh, the the country must buy a lot of the US dollar in their reserve. Mm -hmm. Right, in order to maintain the exchange rate, so these are the, these are the these are these are the things that that they they have they have to do right in order to fix the exchange rate. Okay. Yeah. And uh, of course, the currency market. What we are usually do, we are, we are uh, the currency currency that uh, we are trading all free floating. We don't trade currency that are being being packed. Huh? All right. So there is a uh, any question on that? If not, we go to chapter unit five. So to summarize, they peg in order to stabilize the currency and to prevent the currency race. To to, to uh, yeah, exchange race, right? To to stable. That's why I say they they want to maintain a fixed exchange. There is no exchange risk, and yeah. uh, they also avoid any currency speculator to to come to uh speculate the currency because they doesn't want. The currency to be vol very volatile because when the currency is very volatile, it is very difficult to do business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, just like recently, uh, I think maybe two years ago, or uh, two years ago, when China uh take over the Hong take over Hong Kong, right, and there there's some demonstration on ongoing. Yeah, and uh, Hong Kong Hong Kong dollar start losing value, right? Mm -hmm. Because people don't have confidence in in, in Hong, Hong Kong. Then all the Hong Kong pe Hong Kong people, people who live in Hong Kong, they are actually China people. They but we call it Hong Kong. They they live in Hong Kong. They they lost confidence in the currency and they start to exchange. They want to exchange their co local currency to US dollar, right? And obviously US dollar exchange will keep going up, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So, in order for Hong Kong government to continue to pack the fixed exchange rate to the U.S. dollar, they must keep buying U.S. dollar to maintain the 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 the, the fixed rate. Otherwise, they will not. They will be unpacked. Mm -hmm. Right. So, when they unpack, you will see the dollar Hong Kong dollar will suddenly like drop like a stone. Right. But of course, that never happened. Right. But if it unpacked. Because they, during that time, two years ago, a lot of currency speculators, they speculate that uh, Hong Kong Central Bank 
don't have so much reserve to continue buy the dollar in order to maintain the pack. Yeah. Right? Because in order to maintain the pack and your currency keep 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 losing value, right? You the the said the central bank uh, of Hong Kong they need to continue to buy the the dollar, right? But if they are running out of reserve. They can no longer buy dollar. They have to declare they can they can no longer maintain the ex, the fixed exchange rate, and they will they will unpack. So during that time, a lot of forex trader they speculate that uh, the Hong Kong government will eventually have to unpack, but this thing never happened. So the those speculator they lose money. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So next one, unit five. We talk about pips. As I mentioned, it's a smaller uh uh. uh uh, price move in the exchange rate. Most of the exchange rate, when you look at it, they are four digit, right? The yeah. four digit after this decimal point is considered one pips. Mm -hmm. And then it moves to the left is ten pips, and then one hundred pips, thousand pips, right? So when when um, when you see that some exchange rate have five digit after the decimal point, five digit, this yeah. is one tenth of the pips. Right, so it's negligible, negligible because it's only like zero point one pips only. Yeah. Okay? So most of the trader will count until the fourth, the fourth uh, digit. That's one pips. Okay. So we and as a as a as a trader, we use the pips to calculate our profit and loss. Example: If you manage to buy into this exchange rate, and let's say one hour later the exchange rate went up to one point five to uh, uh five. Nine, five nine seven example. Mm -hmm. You know that you make how much? How many? If you're counting to one point, you make twenty, right? Yeah. You make twenty pips, right? So twenty pips. Then we say how how much is twenty pips? Then we'll come to that the the how to calculate the pips, right? So but basically, as a forex trader, we use the pips to calculate our profit and loss. Yeah. Okay. That one you understand, yeah. Now, when you trade with yen cross, yen pair. Now, yen pair are referring to example US dollar against Japanese yen, right? Maybe pound GBP against Japanese yen, or euro against Japanese pair. All the currency pair that pair up with Japan, Japanese yen. We call that yen pair, right? But when you are calculating the yen pair. It is different. It's no longer the four digit after the decimal point. It's a second digit after the decimal point that is considered one pip. Mm -hmm. So that's a big different there. So do not think oh, uh, uh, the four digit after the decimal point is four, is is one pip. So you count you count this when you ca calculate the yen. You also look at the four digit. Mm -hmm. It's one pip. It's wrong. All right. It's a second digit. It's considered one pip. Or the yen pair. All right. So that's yeah. the difference. Next. Um, okay, so all this over here, Japan curl are quoted in two decimal points, right? All this, which I just explained to you, is yeah. uh, summarize mm -hmm. what I just explained to you, right? Next, uh, we go down to how to calculate pips. Okay. Example, we look at this uh, Euro Yen. They have an exchange rate of 100.5 right, to, to a Euro to Yen. That, that is the exchange rate, 100.5. So to calculate how much is 1 pips, how much is 1 pips, just like we said, we make 20 pips. So we need to know how much is 20 pips. Right, so that's how we calculate. Right, we you get the exchange rate, right? You get zero point one divided by the exchange rate, multiply one hundred thousand. That give you per pips. One pip is nine dollar ninety five cents. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you are if you are calculating the pips for non Japanese pair, like example dollar Swiss, okay, you will get point zero 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 one. Divide by whatever exchange rate. Multiply 100. You get the PIP value. 
Can you follow? Yeah. All right. Is, is this confusing? No, 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 I get it. Yeah. You can follow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and uh, and uh, in this uh, in the forex market, you can actually uh, you can actually trade in different sizes, right? The the most uh, co uh biggest one with uh big size we call it standard lot. Mm -hmm. Right. So, by the way, in in foreign, we don't use by how many share. We say how many lot. Yeah. Buy how many lot or you sell how many lot. Right. So, uh, in in the forex market, you can have four different uh different uh, lot size. Yeah. The common one is a standard lot. Every every lot number of unit is hundred thousand. Right. The down up uh, one one level down is mini lots. In a mini lot, every Number of unit is ten thousand. Then we one more level down is micro lots. That's one thousand, and then we go to <laughs> nano lot. It's one hundred, right? So yeah. in in a, in a, in general, we say that in a standard lot, every one pips is about ten dollar US. In general, but just now I show you the calculation. It is not. Not ten dollar. Some some currency pack can be less than ten dollar. Some can be more than ten dollar. But if you're calculating the euro dollar, usually it's about that. It's about ten dollar. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you go, if you are trading on the mini lots, every one pip is one dollar. Right. If you are trading a micro lot, every one pip is like ten ten. Yeah. Zero point one. You understand? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it just keep going down, right? So most of the broker will offer until here, micro lot. Yeah. Not many broker willing to offer nano because simply because they cannot make money from you. They make very little money. So they don't make, they don't uh, uh, too much work. So they don't offer nano. But yeah. some broker they offer, right? So most of the broker, these are the standard three type of lot size. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, just now we talk about calculate, calculating or the, the PIP value, right? Now, I, I give you a calculator here. So what, you need, what you can do is you just click. There's a link. You go to this website. PIP calculator. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. PIP calculator. Example, I'm looking at the euro dollar. Euro dollar, right? Mm -hmm. And my base currency is US dollar. That means that what is the base, what's my account uh, account currency? Account currency meaning to say that if you in future when you start want to start trading, you need to transfer your money to, to one broker, right? And the broker will ask you what currency, what is what currency you want to maintain? You want to maintain US dollar or euro or pound or Swiss franc? You, you, you can pick, pick and choose what currency you want to maintain. And very commonly, usually, uh, trader will use US dollar. Means that if you transfer your money, whatever ringgit to the broker, then you will tell the broker, I want to convert this into US dollar. So that's called account currency. All right. Now, now if you are trading on, uh, let's say, a uh, mini, uh, micro lot, micro 2000, 2000 is micro, two, two micro lot, right? So you got to know, okay, if I make, Make a, a trade on this micro lot. Every one pip in the micro lot on euro dollar is how much? So you can use this calculator to calculate. It'll tell you that, okay, it's 20 cents. Yeah. And how about if I put in 10,000? If I have an order, one mini lot, 10,000 is one mini lot. And you make, let's say you make, you make a, a 30 pips. You make 30 pips already, right? And you want to find out how much is 30 pips I make on 10,000, right? So you can go to this calculator. They calculate for you. Okay, in a mini lot, every pip is $1. So if you make 30 pips, you make $30. Mm -hmm. Okay? Can I understand? Yeah. Uh, so now, of course, some, sometimes you can change to other currency. Let's say you take, you say, oh, okay, I want to, I want to take a look at, uh, I want to trade uh, euro... Euro cat, and you are trading ten uh, a standard lot, hundred thousand is standard lot. Then you want to find out every pip value is how much. You just calculate. So now you know that every pip value is eight dollar, right? It's not ten dollar. Can you see now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you are trading on the micro lot, you just key in 
micro law is 1000 so every pip is 80 cents if you are trading on if broker offer you nano lot you put in nano lot every pip is 0 0.008 cents okay so this is a very useful calculator just in case you want to you want to find out what is the pip value or any currency that you are trading okay okay Okay, how to calculate profit and loss? Do you understand this part? Yeah. Do you understand this part, how to calculate profit and loss? Yeah. Okay, so for buying, it's quite simple, right? Let's say uh, if... Uh, what is this example? Okay, dollar Swiss franc. And it is trading at this 9191 bid and ask price. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you want to sell dollar Swiss. So when you want to sell, you sell at the bid or ask price. What price you sell at? Bid or ask? You're selling at the ask? You sell at the bid price, the first. This is bid price. The second quote is asking price, right? So you remember, let's say example, you want to buy, you want to buy a house, apartment from, from a house seller. The seller asking you a price. You buy at their asking price, right? So but when you want to sell, you sell at the bid price. Yeah. Okay. So let's say you want to sell US dollar Swiss franc. You believe that dollar is going down. So you want to sell. So you sell at 9191. That, that, that is your exchange rate, right? And... Um, and you sell one standard lot, which is 100,000. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple, few days later, uh, the price moved to 90991. You sold at 9191. It moved to 9091. All right. So you make how much? You make four pips. No. You sold at 9191. And a few days later, the exchange rate go down to 9091. You actually make how much? 100 pips, isn't it? 100 pips. Right, you make 100 pips right, on this pair. But but why, why you say that your profit is 96 pips? Is it due to further fluctuation in the market afterwards? No, because, because when you sell, when you sell, you sell at the big price. But yeah. when you want to close your position, you have to buy, right? Mm -hmm. You are buy, buying at the asking price. Yeah. So that is a different there, right? So you make 96 pips. Okay? Okay? So now then you'll find out, okay, how much is 96 pips? And so you can use your calculator to calculate. All right? Yeah. So if you say, I don't have a calculator, then you can manually calculate. Now, since this is a dollar Swiss pair, it is not the uh, yen, Japanese yen cross. So you will use 0 0.0001 and divide by whatever exchange rate that you want to close your profit, which is 9095, multiply 100,000. Now, why 100,000? Because you sell 100,000, one standard lot. If you, let's say, sell a uh, 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 mini lot, 10,000, then you will just multiply by 10,000, right? Then you get your pip value, okay? That's how you manually calculate. Clear? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's it for the pip and how uh, the lot size and how to calculate the pips. Any questions? No. All right, so next one, we talk about the why interest rate so important to the forex trader. Now, this is something that I think concern you learn in, in, in school. The biggest factor that influence the forex exchange, right, is the interest rate. Mm -hmm. right, interest rate. That is the biggest driver. A lot of investors, they will, they will move their money around into whatever currency that can offer them a better interest rate, better yield. Have you, you learned this yield in school? Yeah. Better yield, right? 
So just like if you have some money and you want to put the money into the FD, fixed deposit, right, in your country, you will look around which bank offer you the highest interest rate, right? Then you put your money there, right? So likewise, when it comes to Forex trading, the hedge fund, right, all the big institution trader, they will look around for currency that offer them the highest interest rate or highest yield. And they will put move their money to that currency. So when they move the, uh, their, their money to that currency, the currency value will go up, right? Mm -hmm. So for us as a retail trader, we are a small, in, small, small uh, investor. We want to follow the big investor because these are the people who always make money, right? And we want to follow them. So in order to uh, follow them, they would not tell us where, which currency they want to buy. So in order, so what and and what we can do one way, what we can do is is in order to trade on the same side with them is. We look for currency that offer the highest yield, right? So let's go through this. That's why we say that interest rate is the most important factor, right? That will affect the uh, currency movement up and down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, tell me what it, what 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 do you understand about interest rate? How it affect the currency? Um. As interest rates increase, that means that the value of a given country's currency increases as well. Why? So, very good, yeah, very good. Interest rate increase. Because the value of the currency, the money, increase, right? Like Why? In an economy, have a higher return if there's higher interest rates. Yes. Okay. But what causes this money to go, go up? When the interest rate goes up, mm -hmm. why the currency has to go up? Now, I want you to think about, look at the market from the in investor perspective. Yeah. Then you would make things very easy to you, right? Why? Just, just want to give you an example. If you have some money and you want to put, put your money into the FD, fixed deposit, right? You will look around for the bank that offer you the highest interest rate. Okay? Yeah. So when, when everybody do the same thing, so trans, translate that into the global uh, uh, environment. If all the investors all over the world realize that U.S. is offering a very high interest rate or going to offer a very high interest rate, will they start to move the money into U.S. dollar? They will, right? Yeah. In order to enjoy a higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very, very easy to understand right? because everybody wants higher interest rate. So yeah. when everybody starts to convert their currency into U.S. dollar, there is a demand. There is a demand for U.S. dollar. That demand goes up. The, it will drive the dollar goes up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why when a country interest rate goes up, their currency also goes up because they create the demand for that currency. So when the demand goes up, the value of the currency goes up. All mm -hmm. right. So that's the reason why as an investor, they always look at the country interest rate. Is the country central bank going to increase interest rate in the future or are they going to cut interest rate in the future? If they believe that interest rate is going up in the future, they will start to move the money into the country and therefore yeah. the currency start moving higher. Mm -hmm. And we as a retail trader, we will also do the same thing. We start to buy the currency and hope that currency go up and we can sell for a profit. All right. So, uh, so uh, why central bank want to increase interest rate? The interest rate is very important, right? So the, yeah. You can see from here, price rise as demand increase, economic growth due to inexpensive capital. Like right now, like right now, the world, all the central bank in the world, they have, 
they have a uh, they have uh, supply a lot of money into their financial market because of the covid right yeah. why they want to do that because covid have destroy a lot of business a lot of business can have to close down and they cannot survive all right so the central bank has pumped in a lot of money to support their economy to support their business and they give free money so that people can go out there and and spend so there are plenty of money in the economy am i right so we say that the 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 capital that uh is inexpensive they are abundant right and economy they hope that by pumping in a lot of money a free money or low interest rate money they will stimulate their economy and economy start to grow okay and once the economy when when economy start to grow currency usually will goes higher yeah right why the currency goes higher because inflation mm -hmm. when economy has grow the price start going higher right yeah yeah so the when economy start to has grow they start to produce inflation when the country inflation start to goes higher what will happen to the central bank what the central bank has to do in order to prevent the inflation from going too high they have to do what currency has to appreciate as well they have to know how how the central bank uh this uh manage their inflation lower they let's say inflation start going higher yeah if they do not want inflation to go up too high too fast how the central bank try to bring the inflation down lower or make ma to a managed level not to go up too fast how they how the central bank do that Hmm. In the first place, when the economy start to grow, yeah, it means business start to have more activities, more yeah. business. People yeah. has money to spend. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. And because people start to have more money to spend, and prices start going higher, and inflation start to go higher. So in order to stop the inflation going higher too fast the central bank will go to the source that create the inflation now what is the source the source is spending they want to reduce people spending am i right yeah in the first place a country uh, economy has inflation is because people overspend people have too much money to spend when they have money they spend when they spend too when everybody spend prices goes up when prices goes up inflation eventually arrive right so in order to stop the inflation going too high one very effective way is to reduce the spending now how the central bank reduce the spending they increase the interest rate when they increase the interest rate of the country they make the borrow cost the borrow cost expensive yeah right so when the when the when the when the loan or when the borrow cost too expensive the business people will hesitate to take a loan from the bank the yeah. individual uh, a consumer they will not they will maybe postpone their buying buying of the house or, or car right so by increasing the interest rate the central bank is actually discouraging people from spending so when people start to have less spending then and uh, then inflation the price will go down and inflation will slowly go, will go down right yeah. can you understand yeah ah. so when the interest rate goes up right the central bank in, increase the interest rate the idea the objective is to bring the inflation down but on the other hand unintentionally they are attracting money from overseas all over the world to put the money into their currency because now the interest rate go up higher the yeah. investor want to put their money into the country to enjoy a better yield a higher yield because interest rate go higher and 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 because of that the currency go higher so we say the currency usually appreciate can you see now the linkage now mm -hmm. yeah right 
So price rise as a demand rise, currency usually appreciate because of anticipation of increased rate. All right. And central bank raise the interest rate. Economy slow down due to expensive capital. Right. When the interest rate getting too high, right? When initially central bank want to combat the inflation to bring the inflation lower to the management level. But once the inflation, once the interest rate getting too high, right, the businesses cannot survive because right now they are they are uh, getting too expensive to borrow money to finance their business. Mm. And people, consumer is the redundant to go to the bank to borrow money because interest is getting too high. So they, they are not going to spend anyhow spend anymore. And therefore, economy start to slow down. Right? Economy start to slow down. And the price start to fall. Okay? Right? So, so that, that's, how, that's how the central bank use the interest rate to manip manipulate their economy. When the economy is doing badly, like right now, they cut interest rate to 0%, right? Or even negative interest rate, minus 0.5%, negative interest rate. Do you know what's negative interest rate? So that means that on any, like, savings that you may have? Yeah. Instead of increasing over time... Do they you're, you're not you're not getting interest paid by the bank. <laughs> See, when the bank have a negative interest rate, instead yeah. of getting interest from the bank, the you have to pay the bank for putting yeah. the money there. So the money that you have depreciates or like it decreases. Not 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 depreciate. Now, why the central bank or government want to want to implement negative interest rate? Now, right now, there are some countries have negative interest rate. If you take a look, if you go to the Google and do a search, there are some countries, example, Euro is having negative interest rate. Japan, negative interest rate. Switzerland, negative interest rate. What else? Um, the, these are the three countries in G8 countries. They are all in negative interest rate. Now, why a central bank want to implement a negative interest rate? Because they do not want, they don't want their people, their citizens, to put the money into the bank. Yeah. They want them to take the money out and go and spend. Now, why they want to do that? To stimulate the economy again. Exactly. Exactly, right? They want to stimulate the economy because the economy is not doing well. So they say that why are you putting the money in the bank? Our economy is suffering right now. Why are you putting the bank, uh, the economy, uh, your money in the bank? So they implement negative interest rate, mm -hmm. All right? So when the country implement negative interest rate, what is the impact of the currency? Um, the hope is for the currency to increase again, as no. a result. Of the, I mean, like for the time being, it will be lower or it'll decrease but yeah their, their currency will go higher or go lower when country when central bank implement negative interest rate at their first, currency will go up or go down i think it'll go down first it definitely go down right why go down so i want you to think in terms of you are the big investor you are the hedge fund mm -hmm. would you put your client money into a currency that is negative in negative you never right you will not do that right yeah, yeah. so that means that everybody are at, uh, let's say right now you 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 used to get uh, let's say a uh, one percent interest putting the money in uh, us dollar and now let's say example the central bank the federal reserve decide to go into negative interest rate become mm -hmm. minus 0.5 percent so now your money put in the in the in the US, you're not getting the interest anymore. So what, what you will going what you likely to do is you are gonna move your money out from US dollar to somewhere else that give you better yield. Right? So when everybody starts to move their money out from US, the dollar value drop. Nobody wants dollar. Can you see now? Yeah. Okay. So when any central bank they implement negative interest rate, they are currency will go down, right? They don't even have to talk about 
uh, they don't even have to implement the currency. They just they can just say, oh, I we might we might uh, implement negative interest rate. They use verbal. Just talk about it. Verbal intervention. So it's like a threat almost. Ah, exactly right. So when when they talk, say, oh, we might we might. When you hear the New New Zealand New Zealand Central Bank say, okay, uh, due to the COVID, our economy is badly badly hurt, right? So yeah. we might if things get worse we might go into negative interest rate. So yeah. they are warning. The, so when the investor read, read the message from the central bank, they might go into negative interest rate. They say, oh, then I'm not going there. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So New Zealand will be so. All right. So, so this interest rate is a very, very important subject that we will talk, we will cover this again in a, in a module too. But right now, you, you need to understand the central bank use interest rate is a very, very effective uh, weapon or tools to manage their economy. When economy is getting too hot. Now, what, 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 what do we mean by economy getting too hot? Like too volatile? No. Too hot is what? When inflation is getting too high. Mm -hmm. Too hot. Everybody start buying, right? Too much activities. So how to cool down, how to cool down an economy? How to cool down an economy? especially when economy is getting too hot. In other words, economy has inflation getting too high. How to cool down, how to cool down a, a, a hot economy or bring down the inflation is to increase the interest rate. Okay? So when the economy is not doing well, they have a deflation. Deflation, recessions. You know what recession, deflation? Yeah. Okay. When the economy is not doing well in the recessions, how the central bank stimulate the economy? By setting something like a negative interest rate? Yes, that's one way. What else? By lower down their yeah. interest rate, right? Yeah. Lower their interest rate to, let's say, 0%. So to, this, to encourage businesses to go to the bank to borrow, Right, so that they borrow at a very, very low interest rate. And also they encourage the individual consumer to go to the bank to borrow because if the central bank give a 0% interest rate, the interbank rate, right, or the retail retail bank give it the rate will be maybe 0.5%. Uh -huh. So now the average populations or business community, they can access to the money. They, they can access to this very cheap money, cheap money. And then they start to borrow and invest, right? So when they start to invest and people start to spend, economy start to get stimulated and start to grow, inflation start to return, right? Okay, yeah. so that is a cycle. I believe you, you, you study this in school also, right? Oh, I don't think we've got here yet. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. We start with like microeconomics and then we go to macro. But but this part, do you understand so far? Yeah. Yeah, interest rate is very, very important. Yeah, very, very important as far as the currency is concerned. And of course, interest rate is related to inflation, right? Yeah. So uh, the next chapter, uh, no, 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 not chapter. The next thing is how can, how can the central bank knows whether their, their economy is getting too hot or the inflation is getting too to high, right? They have every they have this uh, every month have all these reports. They have more more report than this. I'm, I just I just throw in a few of a few of these, right? They they will look at this CPI. This is consumer price index. Do you have you learned this already in school? Yeah. Consumer price index. What this index measure? Like different markets. No, they, they measure inflation. The CPI measure inflation in that economy. Inflation, very, very direct. They measure the inflation in that economy. Right? So the central bank will, will, they will look at the, this monthly report, CPI. Is the CPI going up or is the CPI going uh, sideways or, the, or, or is the CPI reading going down? Right? Mm -hmm. And they can immediately know whether the, the, the economy is, is, is having inflation or no inflation, right? 
Mm-hmm. Now, other report they look at consumer spending. Consumer spending, which come under report, we call retail retail sales, which I sh- I I asked you just now, retail sales, right? How what is the ability of the of the people spending in the consumer go go to the supermarket and gasoline uh, things like that, right? They are they're spending. And of course, also employment. What is the employment level? Are there a lot of people uh, unemployed or, or, or fully employed, right? This also tells them, give them a hint, what is the economy doing, inflation doing, right? Of course, retail sales and the housing market. What is the housing market doing, right? Uh, if the housing market price keep going up, keep going up, what does it tell us? What does it indicate? If the housing price keep going up, what does it indicate? Like increased inflation. Okay. First of all, you, you think from the from the uh, from the start is what caused the housing price to go up? Increase in demand. Increase in demand, exactly. Right. That in other words, there are a lot of house hunter or mm-hmm. investor, they are looking to buy houses, buy property, right? Yeah. Now when they they will only start to buy look to buy property or invest in property only in two conditions one is they have money right yeah. <laughs> or they have uh, they know that the future their, their business is going to do well in the future they are spending the future income or they know that they are that they, they just get a salary increase from the boss their company so they have money extra money to they can afford to buy buy big houses or extra houses so in other words People only start to think of buying house or invest in property only when they think they, they are confident in the economy. Economy is doing well in the future, oh. right? Or they have, mar- they have money. So, so, that, so when we see the housing price going up, it tells us that the, 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 there is growth. There is growth in the economy. Now, remember, uh, at, right at the start beginning, I asked you, how can you tell an economy has grown or no growth? Remember? Mm-hmm. How can you tell? Then we say we look at the GDP. Okay. Yeah. Right? Now we can also look at the housing market. Is the price of the housing going up? If it's going up, it means there's more demand. Now, why there's more demand? Because people are confident in the economy, they are doing well, etc. etc. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so by looking at all these, these are all the indicators or reports that the central bank will use to predict or to assess, to assess whether their economy is doing well or whether there's inflation and whether they should increase interest rate or they should maintain interest rate or whether they should cut interest rate. Yeah. All right. So these are some reports that we use. We'll cover the, this again uh, in the module, uh, next module. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm with the data from, from all these indicator report. A trader, now we as a trader, right, we can put together and estimate whether the central bank will increase interest rate or not. Now, why? Now, remember, uh, why we do all this? We're doing all this is to know whether the future interest rate will go up or not. Why we want to know whether the future interest rate will go up? Because if the interest rate goes up, the currency value will also go up. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Now, how can we tell whether the central bank will increase interest rate or not? We look at their country inflations. Inflations. Because the central bank objective is to fight inflation, to stimulate the economy. So we, if we look at the economy, inflation is going up. We know that central bank will likely and highly increase their interest rate in the future and therefore we want to buy into the currency when before the central bank increase the interest rate and and the, the currency values are going up higher mm-hmm. right so how can we tell whether the economy is have inflation we look at the all these reports right so all these reports are not only accessible to central bank they are accessible to all to everybody, free of charge, to general public. Do you know what where to get all this information? Um, CIA. All this information, do you know all this? Yeah, I know most of it. 
But do you know where to get all this information? Like, can't you get it from the CIA website? No, no, no. Uh, there's one website called uh, Trading Economics. Trading Economy, right? We'll, we'll cover this more in detail to, uh, in the morning too, right? But for now, you just remember this, right? So as a trader, if you are the trader, you want to speculate the currency, right? And we want to know whether a currency going up in the future or going down in the future. We look at their inflation. Now, because by looking at inflation, we will know what the central bank will do in the future interest rate. Okay, okay. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. All right, we come to the unit seven. So this is basically uh, quite straightforward. Basically, we are talking about all the major central banks. The U.S. central bank, we call them Federal Reserve. They are the, so far by far the most powerful uh, central bank. They are, the, they are the central bank always taking the leading role. In other words, if they start to increase interest rate, we will see the other central bank will start to follow. Yeah. If they start to cut interest rate, other central will start to follow, right? So if we look, if we talk about central bank in the world, usually we look at the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve, all right? And the next one uh, in line is the ECB. They are the European Central Bank, right? Now, what is the man mandate of the Central Bank? For the Federal Reserve, their mandate is this. Long-term price stability and grow, right? Whereas for the ECB, what is their mandate? Price stability and grow. Almost everybody the same, right? Yeah. But the thing is, they have one extra objective because European, Europe is uh, by nature is a uh, exporting country. Mm -hmm. It's an export oriented, country, export dependent country. In other words, their economy, their GDP mainly depend on export, right? So the ECB, the central bank, has vast interest in preventing their euro getting too strong. They don't want the currency get to get it too strong, right? Because that will affect their export, their, their export market. Mm -hmm. Can you understand? Yeah. Okay. So this one, this ECB will, will, will not want their currency getting too strong. Just like back to your answer, right? Uh, whether uh, in the long term, whether currency will be trading back in the ring. That, that's the reason. Because nobody wants the currency to be too strong, right? Now for e, uh, Bank of England, BOE in short, we call them. Uh, yeah, you can read from there. What is their mandate? Every central bank, they always have mandate. Their mandate is to maintain monetary and financial stability. Mm. Okay. They keep their inflation target at 2%. Yeah. Okay. So more or less, they are the same. Bank of Japan, the same. Right. So what's their mandate? Price stability again. Stability in the financial system. Make sure they have inflation. But the problem right now is they don't have inflation. Their inflation is very, very low. That's why they Japan, their interest rate is always very, very low because they cannot reach their inflation target. So in order to reach their inflation target, they must encourage people to spend, to borrow, and therefore their interest rate is very, very low. The next one is uh, Bank of Canada, BOC. Okay. Uh, also the same. Okay, Their inflation target is 1% to 3%. Now, why is it important that we understand what is their inflation target? Because if we look at their CPI, CPI measure the inflation of the economy. Now, when they see CPI getting too near, we know that the central bank will, will have to do something to, to correct their inflation or to slow down the inflation. And mm -hmm. therefore, it is very important for us to understand what is the target of each central bank inflation target. Yeah. Yeah. Next one is the R RBA. RBA is the Reserve Bank of Australia. Okay. Their inflation target is 2 to 3%. Then we have the New Zealand RBNZ. Okay, so these are all the major central bank, and we always have to. They will come out from time to time to make announcement, to make uh, speeches about their economy, right? And when they make the kind of announcement, we need to read their content. And why we need to read their content? Because we want to know 
what is their worry, what is their concern. They are the central bank. If they are worried, they will tell the world what is their, what is their economy doing. Are their country doing well or not? What is their future monetary policy? Because this will affect our, our, our strategy, whether we should buy the currency or whether we should sell the currency in the future. All right? So that's the reason uh, we need to read their, 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 their minutes of meeting. Okay, I will share with you more information where to get this in where they get in their in their mini or meeting. Yeah. yeah. We go to unit eight. Right? Leverage. Do you, do you understand leverage? Is it like when you choose to only sell some but not the entire thing? No. Leverage is like uh, you use small money, but mm -hmm. you can buy or sell more than what you have. Oh, okay. Just like this guy. Right? He alone, he cannot leave this big stone because it's too heavy for him to leave the stone, right? The rock. But he used this, this stick and used this as a lead. He can now able to lift up the this heavy rock. Can you see? Can you understand? Oh, okay, yeah. Leverage. Right? By himself, he cannot lift the rock. By using certain instrument, he can lift the rock right now. Right, So yeah. the forex market is a leverage instrument. Leverage instrument. So what it means is, now earlier on we say that in forex market, you have the standard account. In a standard account, every every step, every one lot is 100,000. Remember? Mm -hmm. 100,000. Now in a mini account, every one lot is 10,000. Mm -hmm. In a micro account, every one lot is that 1,000. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the thing is, now not many people have 100,000 in their account or not many people have 10,000 in their account. So how can they trade? They need leverage. They need leverage, right? So the broker will basically give the trader leverage. The leverage is between 2% to 500%. 500%. Wow. So, uh, it's, it's, so when the broker give a leverage to a trader, to the to their customer, it's as if it's as if they lend the money to the trader, to the customer. Yeah. Right. So let's say, let's say, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the leverage can be ranged from two percent to five hundred percent leverage. Now let's say, uh, a, a customer get a leverage of one is to hundred from their broker. One is to hundred. And this customer have $1,000 in his account. But he has a leverage of 100000 One is 100 So how much he can buy up to? How much? Is it 100000 you have a calculator. <laughs> Is it hundred thousand? Hello? You yeah. there? Hello? Okay, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how much is how much this trader can buy or sell up to if he has a leverage of one to one to hundred? Um you just 1,000 multiply 100, what do you get? 1,000 multiply 100, you get 100,000. 100,000, exactly, right? So if the person has $1,000 in his account or her account, he can buy or he can sell up to maximum 100,000. Can you see now? That is leverage. Oh, okay, I get what you mean now. All right, so example, if the person has Five hundred dollars, or let's say a person have only uh, two hundred dollars in his account, but he has a leverage from the broker of one is to five hundred leverage. How much can he buy up to? So it just be like five hundred times one thousand. Five hundred multiply two hundred. Let's say this person only has two hundred dollars in his account. Yeah. So how much can he buy up to? Then he can only buy up to a hundred thousand. Exactly right. So in other words, 
the higher leverage a person can get from the broker, the less money they need to put in their account and they can trade the same amount of units. Can you see now? That's yeah. leverage. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, this one, uh, leverage, okay. Now, margin. I'll come back to this later, but this, we talk about margin first. Now, in all, as I mentioned, when a broker give a leverage to their customer, it is as if, as if like they lend the money to the, their customer to trade, to buy and sell currency, right? Now, in order for the broker to lend the money to the customer, they require the customer to put up a margin, put up a margin, and usually it is 1% of the amount that they want to trade. So example, if you want to trade, buy and sell 100,000 of unit of currency, yeah. right? But you you have only, uh, let's say, uh, $2,000 in your account, but you want to trade 100,000. So you can see now you, are, you have to use leverage, right? Yeah. So in order for the broker to let you trade, they say that, well, if you want to trade 100000 you need to put some money as a deposit. And usually, they will take 1% as a deposit. That means that if you, you want to trade 100000 1% 1 of 100000 is how much? 1000 1000 right? So if your account has $2,000, mm -hmm. they will mark this $1,000 that you cannot use for the time being. Okay. Right? And uh, now you have balanced 1,000, right? Yeah. You can go and buy and sell. Now, after your position closed, this 1,000 will return back to your account again. So this is called the margin. The margin required by the broker for you to open any, any trade. Okay? Okay. Okay, the next one is the uh, rollover. Now, what is a rollover? Now, as you know that the stock market has opened and closed, right? They close at their, their own time is 5 o'clock uh, Eastern time, PM, which is 5 p.m. So when the market closed, right? Now, if you have any positions that you are not, you open but not close, so we call it you roll over your trade. You roll over your trade. So when you roll over your trades, there is a rollover fees that or or, or, or sometimes we call it swap, swap fees. Now, whether you get receive a swap fees or you pay a swap fees, it depends on which currency you buy and sell. If you buy a higher interest rate currency, let's say Australia has an interest rate of 2%, yeah. and US has an interest rate of 1%, and you buy Australia and you sell US, and you let your position roll over to the next day and to next day and next day, you will receive a rollover fees from the broker that credit into your account because you buy a currency that have a higher interest rate. On the other hand, if you sell the Australia which has 2% interest rate, and you buy US dollar, which have 1% interest rate, you end up have to pay the rollover fees, which we call swap fees, to the broker. Right? So this is called rollover. You can get this rollover from the broker website. When you open an account with the broker, you can go to the website and look for rollover. And they will tell you, all the currency they offer, how much you have to pay every day or how much you receive every day when you buy or sell. That's called rollover. Mm -hmm. Okay? Question? No, I think I understand that. Okay. So I think uh, I will stop. We will stop here. Is that okay? Yeah. We continue again for the balance uh, unit uh, in next week. And uh, next week, we also will cover, go into the next module. 
Uh, next next module, I think I also give you access already. It is the uh, this one. Yeah, I have that. Ah, uh, you if you log into this, right? Let me log in again. If you log into this uh, uh, module, you will see there are some video there. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, these are all the previous workshop video. Right? And uh, uh, this is another video that teach you how to how to uh, download the uh, the platform, the, the, the software, the charting software that you will need on the module tree. Right, the video instructions is that you if you have the time you can you can go and watch, yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, the rest of the uh module that we're gonna cover on module two is all here. Yeah. And uh, one more thing is you can I also give you the uh the link that you can download uh you can open account a demo account. You can you can use your name. But yeah, the information you given the when you open account with them a demo just a demo account you do not have to give them the real information. Ah, here you click this one, right? Then you op go and open account with them a demo account. So uh, we might need it next session or we might make it the following session, right? So this is a charting that you're gonna get from this. It's free. Just open a demo account. We do. Okay. All right. Okay, any question you want to ask so far? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, so we'll end here, yeah? Yeah. Mm, okay, bye-bye. Bye, thank you. You're welcome. See you next week, yeah? See you.